Hi, I'm Pam, and I'm here to talk about retro video games. The game I'm reviewing today has all the hallmarks of a game I should really enjoy. But did I? It's Sexies. Zexies was developed by Hudson Soft and released for the NES in North America in 1990, though it came out in Japan two years prior. It combines two different gameplay styles, side-scrolling platforming and horizontal-scrolling shooting. It's the year 2777. The surface and population of Earth have been devastated by war many times over. Only five islands now exist which form the nation of Zexies. Humans now cohabitate with... Fairies? Yeah, it says fairies. Okay. One day, the mechanic fortress Garuza attacks, kills the king, and kidnaps his daughter along with the fairy queen from each island. You play Apollo, who's out to kick some Garuza ass, rescue some women folk, and set everything right. For an 8-bit game, there's a lot going on here, so please excuse this overly long description of the gameplay. Each odd-numbered level is a platformer on one of the five islands. Islands which are littered with doorways. Doors everywhere. Your goal is to find the kidnapped fairy queen. Along the way, you'll be attacked by all kinds of mechanical enemies which you fight with your currently equipped weapon. There are five weapons, but you only have access to one at a time, and there aren't too many opportunities to switch between them. There are two different pickups that drop from defeated enemies and are strewn around the levels. E-balls are currency, which can be given to NPCs found through some of the doorways to buy new weapons, upgrade your current one, get hints about what's to come, or play minigames. There are also L-balls, which refill some of your health. You need to find the Hidden Devil miniboss, defeat him, and take his 4-star. Once you get the 4-star, you can progress to the Mechanic Castle, which is another platforming segment that is non-linear and a bit maze-like. In the middle of each castle is a hangar, where you'll find some mobile armor and do some horizontal shooting. These sections are also non-linear, and if you go through the wrong door at the end, you'll have to replay the section. At the end of the castle, there's a boss fight. The even-numbered levels are longer horizontal shooting segments. You shoot your main weapon with B, and throw an oddly arcing grenade with A. In these segments, you can pick up P capsules, which power up your weapon, and S capsules, which increase your speed. These levels also end in a boss fight, and I found them to be the most challenging parts of the game, as there's no way to regain life. They're a battle of attrition, and if you arrive at the boss with low health, it can easily one-shot you. So, NES, Hudson Soft, multiple different game types, one of which is shoot 'em up? I should love this game. I don't love this game. Problem number one. The horizontal shooting segments don't have auto-fire. Why would you design a shoot 'em up without auto-fire? My poor hands were so sore after every play session, and the shooting segments felt much more punishing than they should have been. Now, I know, turbo controllers are a thing, a thing which I don't happen to own for NES, but I think the lack of autofire is a design failure, not something to be bandaged over with another peripheral. The worst part of this is that there is a weapon in the game that does have continuous fire. It's the laser, a weapon which is only available in the platforming segments and not the shooting segments. Let's continue with things that bug me, shall we? A lot of the boss fights feel like they're meant to be cheesed. There are ones where you can stand in one spot, maybe taking one hit, and just spam the attack button as fast as you can to kill it before it kills you. The devil bosses in the platforming sections all look and behave the same, and the easiest way to beat them? Just jump through their face, taking significant damage, and shoot them in the back of the head repeatedly. My main issue with the platforming levels, though, is all those doorways. Now on paper, they don't seem like a problem. You go through a door, and who knows what you'll find. Maybe it's a mini-boss where you can rescue a lady in a bathtub. Maybe it's a shop where you can buy some sort of power-up. Or even better, a free weapon upgrade. But there are just so many of them. 
There's no sense of flow or momentum to the island parts of the game because there's a new door to go through every 10 steps you take, and you don't want to miss free weapon upgrades currency or the chance to heal. Enemies respawn when you leave the doorways, and there's also a bit of a control issue. You enter doors by pressing up on the D-pad, but you also use up to jump higher. Inadvertently re-entering doors because you're trying to jump away from an enemy making a beeline for you is quite frustrating. Now I'm not going to go full negative on this review because the game does have its high points and at least tries to do some interesting things. It just doesn't always execute them well. But here are some things I do enjoy. Some of the different weapons you get during platforming are pretty fun. The 45 B ball bounces off walls and objects at a 45 degree angle. A powered up moon ball creates a shield around you, and if you use it while pressing down, it turns into a whip, clearing out anything that approaches you. There are also some interesting magic effects, like a mirror which gives you a duplicate Apollo and basically doubles your firepower. The transitions between platforming and shooting, with bosses and mini-bosses peppered throughout, does keep you on your toes and keeps things interesting. The very last boss fight is completely different than anything that came before. There's a lot of variety. The high difficulty of the game is tempered by unlimited continues, along with the password save system if you need to step away. Maybe to punch something because you're mad about the lack of autofire. As for the more technical aspects, it's alright. The game looks pretty good, with interesting looking sprites and lots of color. I particularly like that all the cyborg riders for the horizontal shooting segments are unique and shaped like different animals. The music is hit and miss. While the main theme is quite catchy, a lot of the level music can get a bit repetitive and even a little grating. There is some slowdown when too many things are happening on screen. This is especially bad when using the mirror power-up. Zexies tries to do a lot of cool things, it just doesn't always nail the execution. And while I found my time with the game more frustrating than fun, I wouldn't necessarily tell people to avoid it. However, if you are going to give Zexies a shot, I'd recommend bringing some patience. And probably a turbo controller. Maybe do some thumb exercises. If you want more, check out my review of a dual genre game I do love, The Guardian Legend. Or, if you want another game I'm not so crazy about, check out my review of Prince of Persia. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.